So in question 15, we've been asked to show that sine x minus sine x cos 2x is approximately equal to 2x cubed for small values of x. Now, essentially, this is just small angle theorem where we know for small angles, sine x is approximately equal to x and cos 2x is approximately equal to 1 minus 2x whole squared by 2. So um, we can go ahead and use these approximations in our equation. So if you just go ahead and substitute those in, well, this just becomes x minus x times 1 minus 2x squared by 2. If I go ahead and expand this, this becomes x minus x plus 4x squared um, times x upon 2. Um, and this then falls down to x minus x is just 0 and 4x squared times x is just 4x cubed divided by 2 is just 2x cubed. So for question 15b, we've been asked to hence show that the area between the graph with the equation y is equal to the under root of 8 times sine x minus sine x cos 2x. Um, between the positive x-axis and the line x equals to 0 0.25 can be approximated by the area being equal to or approximately equal to 2 to the power of m times 5 to the power of n where m and n are integers to be found. So essentially we just need to find the area under the curve of y between 0 and 0 0.25. So um, from part A, we know that this equation for y can be simplified down into as follows. So we know that y would just be equal to the under root of 8 times 2x cubed. And that is using our small angle approximation. Um, now, this can further be um, simplified down into um, the under root of 16x cubed. And this in turn becomes... Um, 4x to the power 3 by 2. So now if we were to go ahead and find the area under the curve for this equation, well, we'd find the area under the curve between 0 0.25 and 0 of 4. So 4, I'll bring 4 as a constant outside of x 3 by 2 um, dx. Now if I go ahead and solve the integral for this, this comes out as 4 on the outside and then two by five times x to the power five by two, again, within the interval of 0 0.25 and zero. So then all I need to do now is substitute x is equal to 0 0.25 and zero and take them away from each other. So in the end, I get this is equal to, um, that'll be, so that'll be eight by five times 0 0.25 to the power of 5 by 2 and I can rewrite this as 8 by 5 times 1 by 4 to the power of 5 by 2 and uh, 1 quarter uh, the square root of 1 quarter is just 1 half so I can go ahead and further simplify this into 8 by 5 times uh, a half to the power of 5 and then just bring this into powers of two and five. This can be written as two to the power of three divided by five times one upon two to the five. Again, this can be uh, e this can be rearranged in the form of two to the power of three divided by two to the power of five times one upon five. And then just bring this into indice form. This becomes two to the minus two times five to the minus one hence shown. So for question 15c, the first part asked us to explain why this integral is not a suitable approximation for the integral of sine x minus sine x cos 2x dx between the interval of 6.4 and 6.3. And it's a very simple answer, simply because 6.4 and 6.3 are not small values and the approximation that sine x minus sine x cos 2x is equal to 2x cubed is only valid for small angles. So essentially our answer here is that sine x minus sine x cos 2x is only equal to 2x cubed only for small angles or small values of x. 
hence um, showing why it's not a valid assumption. So for the second part of question 15c, we've been asked to explain how we can actually approximate this large integral um, using the integral of 2x cubed between b and a. Um, now, essentially, we have to just go back to the basis of how approximation of sine x minus sine x cos 2x is equal to 2x cubed is only applicable for small angles. So if you guys understand uh, sine graphs and cos graphs and even tan graphs, they're all periodic graphs, which means that there are sometimes multiple angles that yield the same value when inputted into a cosine or sine function. So essentially, we can deduce here that sine and cos are periodic, which means that maybe what we can do is shift the limits of the integral from higher angles to lower angles by taking away 2 pi again and again. So we can essentially change the limits by shifting the limits by 2 pi until we actually come up across a value of a and b which is indeed a small angle and thus verifies the approximation so sit all a and b are found and that should yield you the two marks <laughs>